Hello everyone, my name is Nitsan. I'm a front-end developer at BIT and today we are going to talk about how we can reuse utility function across our projects. So let's get going right away. The first thing we are going to do is to create a BIT workspace. This is where we create components, export them to the cloud and so on. And let's get coding. And as you can see right now, this workspace is empty. We don't have any components at the moment because we haven't created any yet. Um, but before we, cre we create any components, let's change the, the, the default scope over here to, um, that's, my, that's my BitCloud username, by the way, and you can follow me on BitCloud. But let's change this to, um, let's call this um, reuse util video this is the name for this scope and now we are going to create our first independent component yay and we are going to create it from a template from a node template and we, let's call it to date we are going we are we are going to create a date utility function and now you are you will be able to see right now that bit will generate all the files all the basic files that we need for this component and the first thing we are going to do is to implement uh, this component and because i care about your time and because i'm lazy i'm just going to copy paste from this wonderful util library it's called date fns wonder javascript date utility li utility library i'm going to copy this function over here. it's called, it's called to date and it's a nice function that converts uh, numbers or date to, uh, to, uh, to date objects. And I'm going to free this, this function from this monolith jail and I'm going to create an independent component that can be reused anywhere. This is really cool. And okay, cool. So now we have this implementation over here and we can remove this default export because we don't want it to be a default export. And you know what, let's start our dev serv server, the workspace UI, where when we can see the components in our workspace and check if uh, everything works right. And this is a really nice environment to visual visualize our components. And while this is running, we can run bit status to see that if everything is okay with our, our components. And as we can see, bit tells us that we are missing packages. And it tells us in the, that in this file over here, the composition file, we are, we, are, we are missing the React package. So this is really cool because Bit automatically recognizes um, what import statements we are using and what dependencies uh, we have or don't have in our known models. And let's install the React because we're going to need React to visualize our component. Even though it is a node component, we can still uh, visualize it with using react and while this is installing react we can go ahead and let's let's just pass a random uh, timestamp oh, yeah, sorry for that random timestamp and this is going to be converted to a date object and then we can convert it to a string like that to string so we can see it on the screen and let's look at our component in the workspace UI and we can see right away we have our date over here and we can see that it, that it, it works as expected and in the workspace UI you can see that uh, sometimes it will, it will tell us if we have issues over here I think we need to refresh this page and now yeah we don't have any issues anymore but we can see this is a new component and we can look at the compositions the dependencies at the moment, we don't have any any dependencies any any dependencies over here because this is the only uh, component, and it, it it does not depend on any other comp bit component, so it's all by itself here. And oh, we can see that tests has failed, right? So let's let's have a look at the, at the tests. Yeah, of course, the test has failed because we are expecting hello world, and this this function does not return and re return hello world, of course. So, you know what, if we already copied from this um, utility function library, let's go ahead and um, copy again. So we can copy their tests as well. So, yeah, where, where is it? It was here, right? And we have the tests 
over here. No, not over there. Over here, right in here. Yeah, we have a lot of tests over here. And we can go ahead and copy them to our test file. And this is no longer a default export. It's a named export, so we should put it in curly bit braces. And okay, so everything looks, looks okay. And you can add some docs to your component to show that it works, to, to, to explain people how to use this API, how to use this function, but we're not going to do it right now. And um, so we're going, just, we are going to tag our component, tag it with a new version, with its first version to be precise. And let's go ahead and tag it. And the cool thing with tagging components with uh, in bit, uh, except of the fact that every, com every component is, is independently versioned, is that while bit is tagging our component, it will test our component and it will build our, our, our component and it will create a consumable npm package for our, our component and this is really great so yeah we can see that we have this component uh, with its first version and let's go ahead and export this component to the cloud and exporting look to exporting the component to the cloud gives us the ability to see the component and now this component is shared with the world and anyone can basically use it and where is it it's i think it's down here here it is reuse util video and we can already see this component and we can go ahead and see it over here and if we had written some documentation we could have read about it and we can see the dependencies it's just like the workspace ui and we can see all the tests has uh, passed and this is really nice so let's go ahead and use this component we're going to install it in not in another workspace so let's go ahead and create another workspace and this in this workspace let's call it um let's call it new workspace yeah new workspace and we're going to create another bit workspace and and in order to use this component we have to create a new component so let's go ahead and first of all change the default scope over here reuse util video and we can create another component and we are going to call this component bit create another node component and we are going to call it a difference difference in milliseconds and you guessed right if you guessed so you guessed right that we are going to copy um, another function from our utility library and you know i feel like a hero yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm releasing the components from the monolith jail right because look everything is coupled here they're all coupled together and i'm going to create independent components and components so dip difference in milliseconds where it is where is it and here it is difference in milliseconds and okay this is the test we don't want to test at the moment at least we are going to copy the test as well you remember <laughs> okay so yeah as you can see this component has that two the two date function as a dependency but right but right now it's using a relative import and we are going to change this change this and okay let's copy it over here and of course we don't have um we don't have that two date function over here because we didn't import it and we didn't install it yet you see the to date is unavailable so let's go ahead and um, and 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 is install this component we can just go over here copy it and go to our workspace and bit is going to install our, our component and by the way bit use, is using pnpm behind the scenes to install to install on all dependencies but you can use any package manager that you want and okay so now we have it over here and we can import it from 
uh, to date and we are importing it from our node model, right? We are not using relative imports, we are using absolute imports. And now uh, we have it like that and we can also copy the tests and uh, from our wonderful library over here. Let's copy the tests right away. Ooh, a lot of tests. Someone like to write tests. I don't like to write the, the writing tests. It's horrible. Okay, so let's do it like that. And of course, right now uh, we change. We haven't changed it yet, but we have to change it to a uh, named export, and then we can do it like that. And cool. Now we can also we can also um, show people how to use um, our component. So we are going to do some random, some random timestamps. And yeah, we have to re to install React as well over here. So let's install React. And as you can see, PNPM is really fast. Wow, it's amazing. And as you can see now, uh, we have a co our component ready and we can tag it with its first version, right? So let's tag it with, with its first version. And the cool thing right now is that we are going to tag it with a new version and Pit is going to automatically recognize what dependencies we have and Bit is going to insert these dependencies into the package JSON of our component. Let's say that later on, um, this dependency that we have here, install the to date function, uh, we don't want it exactly like it is at the moment because I don't know why. Okay, let's say, let's have a look at it. And okay, let's say we don't like this, this Internet Explorer support. I mean, Internet Explorer is dead, right? So we don't need this support. So we can, we want to, we want to delete this. This doesn't suit our, uh, suit our needs. So how do we, do we change this component? So in bit, we have a very, very nice command. It's called bit import. And bit import is going to import the component into our workspace so we can modify it and we can change it and tag it with a new version. And this is really cool. Now this component is not going to be only installed over here. It's going to be uh, available for any modifications that we want to make. So let's go ahead and right away remove the Internet Explorer 10 support because we don't want it to support it anymore. It's dead, right? Okay, cool. We remove the Internet Explorer 10, 10 support. We don't need the Internet Explorer support. And we modified this component, right? But the cool thing about Bit is that when we tag uh, our components now, we're going to see something really special. When we tag components in our workspace now, we would expect that only the to date function will be uh, tagged with a new version because each component is, is version independently. But as we can see now, both components were version. And why is this happening? And this is amazing, the, one of the most amazing parts with Bit, that Bit will always keep your components in sync. So if the to date function um, was modified and the difference in milliseconds function is using to date. So we also have to, to update the difference in milliseconds um, version because now it's using um, the, 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 uh, another version of the to date function, right? So bit will auto tag all dependents of components that we modify. And this is really amazing. And let's go ahead and export these components to the cloud and we can go back to the cloud and let's refresh the page. And now we are going to see that we have both components over here. And we have the dependencies graph and we can see it depends on the latest version. And this is how we create reusable utility functions that are independent, but also keep their dependency graph intact. I was Nitsan, you are great. Have a wonderful day.